Hello, and welcome to episode 5 of the Vampire Historian Podcast. First off, I'd like to remind everyone to please subscribe on iTunes and leave a review if you don't mind. Uh, Since I've had a few questions this week about the symposium that I mentioned in last week's episode, I thought I would give you a little bit more information before we get into the uh, main topic of the episode. Uh, The conference, uh, which is called There Are Such Things, Vampire Studies Symposium 2015, will be held on Halloween uh, at the current campus of North Central Texas College, uh, which is in Denton County, about 30 miles north of Dallas. We will have five speakers during the one-day symposium. Uh, The keynote speaker will be Dr. Gordon Melton of Baylor University. Um, Most of us will know him as the author of the vampire book, uh, the subject of episode two of this podcast, and uh, many other books on vampires as well as uh, American religions. Um, We also have folklorist Dr. Michael Bell, uh, who's the author of Food for the Dead, uh, who will be speaking about his work studying vampires in New England. Um, From University of Texas and Austin, we have Slavic Studies professor Dr. Thomas Garza, uh, who will be speaking on the European, uh, Eastern European vampire. Uh, And then um, for those interested in the vampire community or modern vampirism, uh, Dr. Joseph Laycock from Texas State University, an author of Vampires Today, will be... uh, speaking on that subject. Uh, And then finally, um, I myself will be speaking on the future of vampire studies and scholarship uh, and where we need to go from here. Um, We hope to have the website up very soon, uh, hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, Registration will begin on June the 1st and seating is limited, so be sure to register early. Um, If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time about the symposium. All right, now to the vampires. Uh, In episode 3, we talk about one of the early documented cases of uh, Eastern European vampire folklore, uh, which was the Shoemaker of Silesia. Uh, Today we're going to talk about um, the first of two of the most famous cases from 18th century Serbia, and that's uh, the one of Peter Blokadjewicz. Next week we'll be talking about Arnold Pale, so if you saw the teaser photo uh, on social media this week, um, that will actually be episode 6, not episode 5. Um, so in 1725, um, and this is uh, after Austria had taken over parts of um, Eastern Europe from the Turks, um, the imperial provisor of the Gratis district, uh, whose name was Frambald, um, was asked by the villagers of uh, Kisilova to witness the execution of a corpse that was responsible for at least nine other deaths. Um, the vampire in question was named Peter Blagajewicz. Uh, and what makes this case important is that Frambald recorded what he witnessed for his superiors um, and sent that on. Uh, And according to Paul Barber, um, in his book, Vampires, Burial and Death, um, the account is often not found in its entirety. Um, But luckily, Barber himself uh, does give us a full translation in his book um, so that we can get the entire story. Uh, In Frombald's account, we read that since Plagajowicz's death uh, 10 weeks uh, earlier, um, nine other villagers villagers have died, um, and that there are claims that Plagajewicz himself was visiting them at night, and in typical folklore vampire style, uh, was laying on top of them and, uh, quote, throttling them uh, until they finally died. Um, he even appeared to his wife once demanding some of his things, uh, and this is all after his death. Um, when these kinds of visitations uh, and deaths occur, it was very typical for the people to check the body for signs of vampirism, um, these could include a bloated corpse, uh, growing fingernails or hair, um, or just visible signs of blood uh, around the body or in the body. Um, it's these signs that so the villagers are uh, asking Frombald to come and examine um, to see if Plagajewicz was indeed a vampire. Uh, so in this fuller account, we learn that Frombald uh, does attend the exclamation along with the local priest, and um, all of the signs, uh, these previous signs of vampirism are found. Um, so the villagers then drive a stake through the vampire's heart and burn the body uh, in the normal fashion for disposal. Uh, Frombald makes special note of the condition of the corpse as being completely fresh. Um, and as later on, he also says that the blood that comes out is completely fresh as well. Uh, he ends his account placing the blame of the desecration of the body uh, not on himself but on the people who were, quote, besides themselves with fear. Um, so there are many aspects of this story that will be typical of our folklore vampires, um, but uh, we're going to wait until next week to talk about all of those, since this case is similar in many ways to that of uh, our next week's subject, Arnold Pale, um, and we have a very complete account of his story as well. 
Um, so if you want more information about uh, the book mentioned, Paul Barber's book, or, or any other sources, um, they can be found at thevampirehistorian.com. Uh, you can always, again, follow me on Twitter or Tumblr at Vamp Historian, or you can find The Vampire Historian on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, if you have questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, you can send an email to thevampirehistorian at gmail.com. And uh, thanks for listening, and check back next week for another episode. Thank you.